And there you go. So hello, everyone. Welcome and thanks for signing up for our second Green Business Sustainability, Sustainability Talk hosted by EcoSlow's Slow County Green Business Program. My name is Evelyn Barajas Perez. I'm the Sustainability Coordinator with EcoSlow. EcoSlow is the Environmental Center of San Luis Obispo County. We are a local nonprofit that focuses on education, advocacy, and taking action to protect our beautiful Central Coast environment. We run many programs, including beach cleanups, tree plantings, docent lit hikes, green drinks, and Slow County Green Business Program. This program today is made possible with the support from, Eco, from Slow County Integrated Waste Management Authority, also known as IWMA. The IWMA is a public agency that educates our community about garbage and recycling, manages hazardous waste disposal programs, passes resource management ordinances, they, are, they have a fantastic website with online resources, including waste management outreach and educational materials for schools, businesses, and residents. If you ever are unsure of how to dispose of an item, you can type it into the IWA website. They'll tell you exactly what to do with it. Sign up for their newsletters to get interesting info and tips on how to reduce your waste, and be sure to check out their website and social media. Well, today we have a wonderful guest speaker, Catalina Foster. Uh, she is a program coordinator at the San Luis Obispo Council of Governments in the Rideshare Division. She was born and raised in Los Osos, where she spent most of her childhood exploring Montaña de Oro, surfing in Morro Bay, and taking family dogs on hikes in Big Sur. Her love for rugged coastline brought her to Santa Cruz, where she earned her degree in environmental science at UCSC. After college, she stayed in Santa Cruz area and worked for an environmental nonprofit and a native plant nursery. Her desire to try and make the world a happier, greener, and better place has all, always played a role in where she worked. Fate brought her back to Los Osos eight years later, where she lives with her husband and enjoys much of the same hobbies as she did as a child. Her desire to better the planet took the form of alternative transportation advocacy three years ago when she started to work for Slowcog. Now she works for Slow County residents to encourage folks to get out of their single occupancy vehicle and into alternative modes. Thanks again, Catalina, for joining us today and being here. Awesome, thank you, Evelyn. So yes, my name is Catalina and I am a program coordinator here at in the Rideshare Division um, at Slowcog. So I'm going to talk to you today about Slowcog as a whole, what we do in the Rideshare Division, and how we can help your business and employees by encouraging sustainable transportation options. Oops. Woo. Warp speed. Okay. So first, San Luis Obispo Council of Governments. What the heck is that? Slowcog is the regional transportation planning and funding agency for Slow County. So um, we, re we report to a board of 13 elected officials made up of representatives from each of the seven cities in Slow County. The five members of the Board of Supervisors and then a Caltrans representative. So that makes 13. Um, we're responsible for transportation planning and programming funds allocated by the state and federal government for our region. So we receive that money um, from the state and the feds, and then we divvy it out to local cities and the county. Next slide. So um, with all that state and federal funding that we get through applying for grants, we can help fund some pretty awesome projects. And while a lot of the money is directly tied to transportation, like overpasses, roundabouts, street configurations, um, we also provide funding for the preservation of open space and land conservation. I'm sure most of you can recognize some of the places on the screen. Um, they all used money from Slowcog to acquire the land. So you have the Pismo Preserve, Elfin Forest, Estero Bluffs, a bunch of really awesome spots. Another really cool thing that Slowcog does is that we um, secure a lot of funding for class one bikeways and shared use paths. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what a class one bike path would be, that would be one that's the bikes are completely separated from cars. So it's like the ideal situation for both the driver, the bicyclist and the pedestrian. Um, some examples of that locally that we've funded is Moonstone Beach Boardwalk up in Cambria, the Morro Bay Harbor Walk, the Jennifer Street Bridge and the Bob Jones Bike Trail. So um, 
kind of to hone back in on what rideshare is and what we do in the rideshare division. Uh, we're one of three divisions at Slowcog and we're primarily concerned with transportation demand management. It's also called TDM and it's maximizing the efficiency of our transportation system by increasing people's awareness of their transportation options and creating opportunities for people to get out of their cars. So down at the bottom, you'll see some of our programs which are tailored towards totally different audiences based on their needs. So from commuters to students, seniors to folks with disabilities, um, we have a whole lot going on. So today I'm going to be specifically talking about that middle icon, the back and forth club, which is our employer program. So um, we're going to, with a kind of a green business network lens, um, we're in the business of getting your employees out of their cars. So the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions from human activities in the United States is burning fossil fuels through electricity, heat, and unfortunately transportation, with transportation being um, the largest portion of that. So further broken down, it's actually light duty vehicles that produce over 50% of transportation emissions. So that's gonna be your day-to-day -day commuter cars. Um, some of you have probably seen the photo there in the middle where there's 60 people being transported by different modes, bus, bike, and then in their individual cars. So this illustrates really what we're trying to get people to think about when they consider their transportation choices in Slow County. Um, what it really comes down to is our use of space and time to get people where they need to go. So you could sort of describe rideshare um, and transportation demand management as the flip side of the actual infrastructure. Um, so here are some examples of what our outreach activities look like in, our, in rideshare. Uh, we find that we can get people to think about their transportation options and maybe try something new like walking or biking. Um, during an event. So if we can get them to do that during the event, it's more likely that you can make it a regular habit. So we like to organize events like bike to work day and walk to school day, ride share week, all sorts of fun things to try to get people into different modes and hopefully having a little bit of fun along the way. So um, what does commute choice and sustainable transportation matter to a business owner? Um, well, it can help you both recruit and retain employees, and especially um, in these days, that that is a mounting problem. Um, it can also help with the on-time arrival. If you're there taking the bus or carpooling, um, there's just a little more accountability there. So you're going to have your staff show up on time, which is great. Um, a huge, huge, huge one, especially if you're in like the downtown core of your community, is you can reduce parking challenges. So if you have staff that are no longer bringing their personal vehicle to work, um, then that's going to open up a lot of space. Less parking for staff means more parking for customers. So with the price of gas right now coupled with that, um, it can, I mean, that's, that can, there's a lot of money going on there. So, um, at last and certainly not least, uh, it can reduce not only your employees' um, impact on our environment, but your business's impact as a whole. So it is very applicable to business owners. So when you go through the Green Business Network um, certification process, one of the first things that we do is we identify an employee transportation coordinator. We call them ETCs. Um, it's essentially just a liaison between your business and us here at Rideshare. Um, they get added to an ETC email list where we send out short monthly emails about what we have going on in the Rideshare division and how um, your business can participate. So we usually like to include some type of interactive aspect where we'll ask, you know, please let us know what kind of giveaways your staff would be um, excited by or encouraged by um, to be to participate in like a challenge. And then we use that feedback in our future campaigns. We also do give away um, an end of year ETC thank you gift, and I won't spoil it. So you'll just have to be an ETC and enroll in the Green Business Network um, to figure that out. So, now you've decided that you'd like to enroll in the Green Business Network, you'd like to um, get your employees thinking about how they move around the county, how they show up to their workplace, and you've identified your ETC. So now what? Um, we have a whole lot of tools that you can use to kind of um, get the ball rolling, I should say. 
Um, I'm going to talk about those tools in the next couple slides, but I do want to stress that the impact of the program is really dependent on how much the employers themselves educate their staff on transportation options. Um, I like to say I can send out a million emails about biking to your staff, but if you know none of my staff are going to bike, we have our business on you know, um, some really busy road, everyone's much more interested in busing, you're the ETC's um, communication with us like, hey, Catalina, everyone's interested in busing is super important and it's and it's pretty critical to the success of um, kind of shifting your employees out of their single occupancy vehicle. So we do have a commuter survey um, that we can send you to send out to all your staff. It asks some really cool questions. It asks how, um, you know, where they live, um, how they normally commute to work, um, what they're interested in as far as alternative modes go, what would get them into those alternative modes. Then we take all that information and we create a document for you to kind of, um, you know, if you have 40 staff, you say, I don't even know where to start. You send out that survey. We learn um, a lot about your staff and how they commute and what they want. And then we give you recommendations that you can either take it or leave it. Um, and I'm going to go into what some of those recommendations might look like. So this is what employers can do. Um, they can offer a daily incentive to shift their staff out of their single occupancy cars. We have some employers that offer 50 cents a day, some offer $2 a day. Um, it's really up to you guys. Um, Subsidized transit passes are a great option. If you work in the downtown core of San Luis Obispo, you actually um, can get a free downtown access pass on slow transit. So you can get a free bus pass there, which is awesome. Um, we also have employers that offer their employees to buy their bus passes um, with pre-tax money. So that's another great um, transit benefit. As an employer, you can also subsidize high occupancy vehicles. So that's going to be like your van pool. Um, you can give out rider subsidies. So, you know, I'm going to give all my staff that are in a van pool 40 bucks um, a month towards their van pool costs. You can do a captain subsidy where you give your van pool captain a little bit more. You can give your staff gas cards. Um, that can look a lot of different ways. Another really common um, kind of thing that employers do to get their staff out of their cars is they do some type of active transportation infrastructure. So that can be um, installing showers if that's not feasible, lockers, they allow for indoor bike storage, um, indoor bike racks are really common. Um, we actually have bike repair station tools. So if you wanna create like a little um, bike repair station in your office, just making it more comfortable um, and friendly to ride your bike in. Um, also, bike shares are another great uh, active transportation option for those looking to get their employees to shift. Lastly, preferential carpool parking. Again, if you're in a situation maybe like at the county, they have a pretty big parking issues. So they actually designate spots for their carpool and van poolers so that um, just the the um, not having to be like, oh, I need to look for a space because you know your carpool is going to get a spot is sometimes enough to incentivize people to carpool. So next is how are we helping? So those are all things that employers can do to shift their employees out of their cars. These are things that we at Rideshare do just already. So we give away $100 every month to people who are logging their trips in iRideShare. And I'm going to talk about iRideShare in a minute here. But we give away $100 every month to people who are logging their alternative trips. Um, we do regional campaigns. So bike months, summer clean air challenge, rideshare week. Um, we do, you know, walk to school days. We, we try to get um, plan events kind of equal, equidistant throughout the year to, to get people to... Um, do that mode shift. 
uh, we offer a van full subsidy here at SOCOG. So we will pay 50% of the entire lease cost on a van. So um, that's a really awesome benefit of a van pool is an extra large carpool, basically. It's six or more folks. So if you, um, the hospitality industry has really been looking into um, van pools, and that could be a really good option if you have staff that are all coming from the same location for the same shift at work. So we have tri transit passes, it's free bus passes. Um, we will kind of going into the next one, individual transportation trip planning, we will actually ride the bus with your staff. So if you um, have people that are interested in riding the bus, but it seems like they don't know how to pay their fare or they're nervous about when to, you know, pull the pull stop or whatever, we will actually ride the bus with them. Um, we will also um, plan out their, you know, if they don't want us to ride the bus with them, but they're like, Catalina, how do I get from my house to my workplace? We'll create a whole trip plan for them um, with the times and the stops and everything. So we're basically here as like to support in whatever your staff need to um, try a different mode. Uh, we'll also do worksite events, new employee orientations, lunch and learns, any type of event that you want us to come out there. We usually bring snacks or treats. Um, and giveaways and we'll go out there and table an event um so if you're maybe a newly enrolled business and you are really excited about getting your staff to start thinking about how they get to work maybe when you get certified we can come out and do like a here are some benefits to choosing alternative modes here are some tri transit passes and discounts to some local bike shops and we'll we'll drum up something super fun and and great so I did mention um, iRideShare. So iRideShare.org is our regional trip planning and trip logging platform. Um, we can administrate, administer all of those incentives that I talked about in the former slides through this iRideShare program. So that's part of what we do at iRideShare. We can um, basically manage any commuter program you want totally free of charge. It's just what we're here for. So hardly anything's free these days, but this is completely free. Um, Slowcog pays for the software, so it's free for the region to use, which is an really awesome because it's a very expensive scene and it's it's really cool. Um, so employees would sign up for I Ride Share. They'd make an account um, and then they would join their employer specific network. So we have individualized networks based on employer or if you're really big like the county for instance or cal poly or mind body it's by department so um most of you who are joining the green business network it's going to be um, just based on your employer the etc would be the manager of that network and they'll be able to see who's part of it and who's logging trips they'll have the power to remove folks who maybe don't work there anymore um, and kind of just keep an eye on what's going on in there so you can set um, a monthly trip log reminder. So I usually set it for every two, sometimes every three weeks. I go in there, I log the days that I carpooled, I just press log and um, it's super easy, it takes a minute and shows you your impacts, which is pretty cool. That's my little screenshotted calendar there. Um, if you're concerned about kind of like the auditing process of people, you know, potentially logging trips that they're not taking. Um, you can connect Fitbit, Strava, and like a whole bunch of other kind of third-party apps to this. So it will actually automatically log your trips. They have a bunch of really cool like integration that I am more than happy to get into um, answering any questions if people have specific questions about like auditing the trips and um, kind of doing verified commutes. So. Um, it's all built into the system. Again, totally free. Um, we actually use this data from the employees logging these trips to then apply for grants in the future. So it's kind of, we have kind of a full circle here going. Um, so you, the trip logs that you do, um, that you do complete, we, we use that data for, to, to basically build um, great infrastructure in the county. So it's pretty cool. Um, we will pretty much make any promotional material that you're interested in. So here um, on the side of your screen where it says Atascadero State Hospital, that's an example of a employee new hire one sheet. So we will make this for your employees. It will basically have 
your business on the top and um, it will have the, you know, liaisons information of, you know, Rick is our, um, is our ETC. And if you need any help, contact Rick or whoever. And we'll list out all the both regional um, commuter benefits. And then if you have any employer benefits, we'd list that here too. So um, we also, that middle picture is we have a TDM menu that kind of lists out all the different TDM measures you could take to get your staff to, to, to transition out of single occupancy vehicles. So it's comprehensive. It's, it's pretty big and kind of governmenty, but it's very informative. So if you're interested in that, we can get you that. And then um, on the other side, the Vanpool FAQ, that's an example of something that we whipped up for Tuscadero State Hospital just because they were getting a lot of questions about Vanpool and we created it. So if you have an idea in your, of your head of something that you'd like us to create to hand out to your employees, um, we can do it. We're here to help you. So um, next is we can also help you get certified. Um, both of these certifications, we can walk you through the process, best workplace for com commuters and the League of American Bicyclists. It's pretty cool. You're listed on their website. It's They send out like a national e-blast newsletter. Um, it's kind of a big deal. So you get another sticker to stick next to your Slow County um, Green Business Network sticker on your front door. Oops. So I would be amiss if I did not mention that one of our biggest campaigns is actually coming up. Um, it is in May. It's Bike Month. We're doing Bike to Work Week, we'll, where we'll have breakfasts um, for bikers and bike happy hours. We're giving away weekly prizes for um, folks that are logging active trips in iRideShare during the month of May. And then the grand prize is a $2,000 e-bike from Trinity Cyclery. So um, this is an example of something that we would use to try to to try to incentivize your employees. So, um, you know, if you're newly enrolled or newly certified in the Green Business Network, this would be a great opportunity to say, hey, Rideshare, come on out to my um, job site and can you talk about bike month and what you guys have going on and we have bike lights and all sorts of fun bike swag that we would bring um, and hand out to your employees and get them excited for bike month coming up so um, if you do want any information specific to this year's bike month 2022 you can visit rideshare.org forward slash bike month um, so kind of to wrap it all up um, it's it's transportation is a huge factor in sustainability. It's it's huge, maybe one of the largest. And so um, we're here at Rideshare really to be a tool, a resource, a supporter, your cheerleader, um, to try to help you um, get your employees to think about how they move around Slow County. And um, this is just the in iRideShare, you will have a output of your impacts and it will be, this is for the, all of Green Business Networks, um, but you'll have one specific to your business. So um, if you do any type of reporting at the end of the year, um, if you need like the metrics, you get them. So it's very cool. Um, you have access to all the trips, all the um, you know CO2 reduce, the money savings. So if you do have someone maybe higher up that's saying, why are we participating in this? Here is your, you know, the proof is in the pudding. Um, it can make a huge impact and um, it's, it's a great program. So that's what I have for you today. Um, short and sweet, short-ish and sweet. Um, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions. And please feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions. Here's a resource. Again, transportation cheerleader trying to save the world. So I'm here if you need me. <laughs> so I have a question. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned the if your business is downtown in downtown South. Um, that you are able to get free bus passes. How is that process like to get those free passes? Yes. So it's super easy. You're actually going to go to the City of Slow um, website, or I can email it to you directly, but it's called the DAP Pass, D is in dog, A, P, um, as in Peter. So downtown access pass, you will fill it out. Um, you will attach a pay stub and you will drop it off to 919, um, the the city building there, 919 
919 Palm Street. Um, and there is a map also on the, if you look up downtown access pass, city of slow, there's a map that shows the border of what they consider the core downtown. Um, you can take a look at that and you'll be able to see if you qualify. It's super easy. It's super worth it. If you live within the city of slow, there's actually a bus stop a quarter mile away from 99% of the people in slow. So if you don't think there's a bus stop next to you, shoot me an email and I will, I'll find it. So. <laughs> I love that. And definitely, there's definitely some businesses that I can think of that would love to take advantage of that. Um, but as far as that, I don't have any other questions. Sierra, do you have any questions? No questions, but I was just checking on the downtown access pass and I'm very excited to check that out further. So thank you for asking Evelyn. <laughs> well, um, with that, thank you so much, Catalina. I'm going to keep you, you online after this for a little bit, but just so I don't have to um, keep recording. Them. Thanks again <laughs> so much for all your information. I came out knowing a lot more and I'm super excited to educate other businesses on this. Awesome. Love to hear it. Yeah, we're just here. We're here to help you and help the businesses. And um, yeah, gas is is getting a little bit cheaper, but it's not getting much cheaper. So, you know, save some money, hop in a carpool on your bike, 